Let's talk about what the hell I'm wearing. So it's the fall season. Temperatures are starting to drop. Those crisp summer nights are fading. And for a lot of you, you're starting to put your backpacking gear away. But don't! There's less people out there. There's the beautiful fall colors. But for most people where they live, the fall comes with a certain set of challenges. Here in Idaho, we know all about the cold and we're already starting to see it. But don't let that discourage you. You just have to be prepared. Let's talk about layers. How to layer, what layers you need, what kind of warmth you're looking for, how to pack all that extra clothing into your backpack. Cue that beautiful fall slow motion. and influencer types always put this together to look really nice but really this is the way it is <laughs> these are my fall layers we're just gonna go over the clothing here today not the sleeping bag or the sleeping pad arrangement if you want I do have a video on that on what I'm using you know really it breaks down to in the fall when you're sleeping get an insulated sleeping pad and then I have my 17 degree igneo you can find my video about these and how to set up your sleeping arrangement in this card up here. But for right now, we're just gonna go over the layer. So first things first, what are you gonna wear as a shirt, as your base layer? This is nice, it's quick dry, it's weatherproof. 32 degrees, I think is actually the name of the company. And this shirt is great, there's a lot of shirts like this. Just make sure it's, it's long sleeve and make sure that uh, it's not gonna soak up your sweat, like cotton or anything. These are my hiking pants. They're just the hiking pants I use in the summer. Don't worry, I'm actually wearing pants right now, but you couldn't see them, so. They unzip so you can turn them into shorts. Moving on to my favorite, and what I think is one of the most important layers, your mid layers. These are my tights. These are Smart Wool 250 Intra Knit. You want them tight, you, can't, you don't want them baggy, but these I can hike in, but mostly I just sleep in these or I hang around the campfire in these. These can go underneath, obviously, my hiking shorts. This is from REI Co-op. Uh, it's their basic uh, mid-weight. Yeah, once again, you don't want it to get wet when you sweat, but you also want it to, to keep you warm. For my socks, I'm still wearing my normal hiking socks. Uh, I always bring two hiking, two pairs of hiking socks because obviously one gets wet, then you can wear the other ones. But in the fall, I bring a third, the socks that I snowboard in, and these are just for sleeping. And yeah, it's a little extra room in the bag, but these will keep your feet warm when you uh, when you go to bed at night. In the newest video of the uh, Boulder Louis Lake Loop, I was wearing some gloves in the beginning. Right when we started, Brett was making fun of me for the way I looked with these gloves. In the morning is when it's the coldest, when you start. And if you're like me and you're holding a camera, that camera is metal and it's cold. I stuck my tripod in the river to get that last shot and it's the joints have frozen. I always have these in my bag. They're those like thin, just kind of touch screen gloves. Uh, these are from Azero, they work great. By the way, by hike two, Brett wasn't shooting much in the mornings because he had his hands shoved in his, in his pockets and uh, he thought my gloves weren't that stupid then. To the most important part, this is my down jacket. This is a very popular down jacket in the backpacking community. This is the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer 2. This is one of the lightest down jackets you can buy. It's 800 fill. Again, if you have just to touch on down, the bigger that number is, if it's 600, 700, 800, 850 is usually the top, the cream of the crop. This is 800 fill. That just means you're gonna get more warmth for less weight. And this at eight ounces packs up really super light. Now, these are expensive. This one is about 200 bucks, which is actually a pretty good price. These are expensive, and when I first bought this thing, I made the brutal mistake of wearing it around a campfire. As you can see, I spent, I was really hopeful to not put a hole in it, but I did. If you get a hole in one of these things, you don't sew it or anything like that. You just get some of this repair patches uh, from Tenacious Tape. It's about five bucks, super easy. You cut it out, you stick it on here. It works like scotch tape. Actually, when I noticed this hole, I didn't have any of this lying around and I used scotch tape, it worked really well. So, and uh, 
I was really perturbed that I couldn't sit around the fire and wear down. I mean, in the fall, you want to be sitting around a fire and you want to be warm. So I was like, what do I take? This is the Trailsmith Woven Pullover by REI. It's really light, it's really thin, it's really tough. It literally says on the tag, made to carry firewood. And I take this with me just to be around the fireplace. I can wear this, I can wear my fleece, all my nice stuff, and then I throw on this $20 cheap pullover and it keeps my gear looking nice, looking fresh. It adds an extra layer to keep me warm. So a good fire hack. Rain gear, definitely take rain gear if there's clouds in the forecast. <laughs> it also works as a, a windbreaker, but again, it's expensive, so you probably don't want to wear it. You probably don't want to wear it around the fireplace. Down does not work well with water. So you can't let down get wet. It's not going to protect you. So make sure you have a piece of rain gear, at least over the down. I only usually take pants if I'm really expecting rain because the hiking pants and everything, you know, wick moisture away so well and they quick dry so fast. But if I know that rain is in the forecast, and I'm expecting rain, I will take the pants. And of course I have my beanie. This is a smart wool beanie. It's thin, it's made for backpacking. When you're looking for something to keep your head warm, make sure it's thin. Don't get one of those big puffy beanies that are comfy for around town. So the other challenge with all this stuff here is how do I shove it into my backpack? What's the most efficient way to carry this? How do I find room for all this stuff? So the first tip I'll give you is what's called an army roll. This is how I roll my clothes. Guess where it comes from? Our military does it. And I'm not gonna go into this on, in too much detail. There's tons of videos online. Roll it up. So see, here's one. That's rolled. You can do it with pants too, and it's basically just rolling it up and tucking your clothes into themselves. You can see here, but you can see Here we go, I'm starting to get some rolls going here. Once I get them into the army roll, everything goes into this, uh, into this compression sack. Blah, 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 you get it, you get it. Shove down in there, usually on top where I can grab it. Once again, that was a quick kind of haphazard uh, <laughs> roll and stuff, but you get the idea. Once you stuff it down into the army roll, you can put that all together and stuff it down even more in a compression sack. And then this ends up going in my bag and saving me a ton of space. So links to all the clothing I use for fall backpacking in Idaho can be found in the description below. Don't miss fall. It's a beautiful season. Stay warm out there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.